What's up guys, this is Steve Randall at night, and today what I've got for you is my part 2 of what is on my Nexus 5 video. Since doing part 1 of this video, I have put Android 5.1 onto my Nexus 5, so that's the main change, but I'm going to show you all the different apps and things that I'm now using uh, on Android 5.1, so I hope you enjoy. So as I said, I'm now running Android version 5.1. If you want to know how to flash this, I'll link you in the description to my guide on how to flash Lollipop. All you need to do is go to the other link in the description and grab the new firmware version um, and you just flash that in exactly the same way and you'll get Android 5.1, just remember that it does wipe everything off your phone. And to that end, I recently started using Helium. This is a backup app that is from the same guys who make Clockwork Mod. It works if you're routed or non-routed, so I'm going to use it to back my phone up and then root it. You can select all apps or single apps if you want to and when you hit backup you get the option to save it. To your internal storage you can also schedule a backup which is cool you can schedule it to then do it in the evening or um, that night because it does take um, a little bit of time you can also then save it automatically to the cloud um, which is really useful i save it to google drive you do need the pro version to be able to then restore the backup from a cloud storage account i'm still using nova launcher it's recently been updated and the whole thing looks really nice and material all the settings in the app and things like that now we'll have that nice material look the icon theme i'm using is moonshine and on my home screen now it's size 120%. As far as widgets go, I'm still running something sort of fairly simple um, with big widgets that kind of act like cards. So if I swipe this way, I've got my um, event flow calendar widget, which I've gone back to. Um, I use the Google one for a little bit, but I think on balance, I do prefer the event flow one just because it looks a little bit cleaner. Next up, we have the widget for Phoenix, which is still my favorite, my favorite Twitter app. And at the moment, I'm having it so it displays all my mentions. Then on the next screen, I've got my Hangouts, and then I also have my Google Keep, and I've also got it set so that the, um, the home screens loop. The live wallpaper I'm using is called Minima, which runs a sort of material style parallax effect, which looks really, really cool. There's a bunch of different themes you can download. Some of them, as you can see, do require the pro version, but there is a decent amount that are in the free version. And as you can see, the background moves, sort of to make your icons look a little bit more 3D and just make the whole thing a little bit more interesting. As far as my app drawer goes, I've now got it set so I just give my home button a tap and it pulls up all my apps. I have now also got it so that all my apps are in folders, so I just have this one card for all of my applications. I then have another panel there and they are just my folders for keeping apps that I'm going to be doing review videos of, so I just have them all set on one side um, just to make them a little bit easier to find. In my design folder, I've got Zupa Widget Pro, which is probably one of the best, most customizable widgets. Then we've got an app called Tap It. This app randomly generates material style wallpapers, it's really really cool, you'll never get two that are exactly alike. You have an option to vote up or down depending on which one you like and then it'll start to tweak um, the algorithm so it makes wallpapers more to your liking. And there is also an option which will have it so it'll automatically cycle wallpapers um, at intervals of time on your home screen. Then we've just got some of the icon packs I've been using, so Moonshine which is what I'm currently using, Squircle and Elta. Next up we've got Tholitus, which I've definitely showed you guys before. So this lets you add a blur and dim effect to your wallpapers or any image on your phone and you can then save them um, as well. Then we've got AC Display. Now I've been using this before for notifications but I'd also been using it in contingency with an app called Gravity Screen which turns your phone on and off um, depending on like if you take it out of your pocket. What I didn't realise is AC Display now has a thing called Active Display which will automatically do that for you and it does it really nicely. So you take your phone out of your pocket and the screen will automatically turn on. And then I just think it's the nicest way um, to see notifications on your phone um, and to use as a lock screen. Then we've got another icon pack called Umbra, which I really like. Uh, we've got Musi, which is the live wallpaper I've shown you guys a lot, which fuzzes out the background um, in the same style as Tholitus. Then we've got Now Paper, which generates Google Now style landscapes um, for use with Musi, or you can just use them, um, just use them independently. Then we've got Minima, which I showed you already. Then we've got some more icons called Dift icons, some more icons called Cake Pop, and some more called Voxel. Then we've got a few games. Um, Kiwi Wonder's really good. It's kind of a clone of that Jetpack uh, jet jet Joyride style game. It's pretty decent though. Um, I always play a lot of chess on here, and Stick Cricket is really, really good as well. Um, and there's a couple of different versions of Stick Cricket um, out for Android at the moment. Then we've got my music folder. Uh, with Spotify, which as you guys know is my music player of choice. And then Google Music, which I don't really use, um, I sort of have there just because it needs to go somewhere. Then in the news app we've got Play Newsstand, um, Pocket Casts, Umanu, News and Weather. Both the Google offerings, um, Play Newsstand and News and Weather are still pretty good. Pocket Casts is my podcast player of choice, just the interface 
looks really really nice and it just works really smoothly and you never have to worry about it. And then we've got Umano which I've definitely talked about before. This turns news articles basically into podcasts and then you listen to them. They're really really nicely done, the people who read them out have got really good voices for it um, and they're generally very good articles and the smart radio feature will look at what you've been looking at and then start producing stories based on your preferences um, and it does work really well, it comes up with some really interesting stuff. There we've got photography, we've just got the camera. We've got two editing apps called Lido and Pixlr. I am going to do um, a more detailed video, sort of a top five or a top ten um, video and photo editing apps. But these are two you should definitely try out. Um, Pixlr is sort of like more like your standard one, it has lots of different features and Lido has some really cool sort of more unique effects. Then moving on to productivity, we've got Pocket. This is definitely the best way just to save stuff from across the internet from different devices and then read it later on your phone. Then we've got the Google things, we've got Google Slides, Google Sheets, Google Calendar, the calculator, an app called Sleep Better, which I showed you guys before in my part one of this video. This is a app that will wake you up when you're in sort of a light sleep cycle and I don't really know the science behind it particularly well, but it does seem to work, it does seem to make you a little bit perkier when you wake up. We've also got Push Bullet, which is my favourite way to send stuff from my phone to my laptop. Chrome Remake Desktop, which is really cool, lets you control your laptop. Um, from anywhere as long as you've got signal. I use it just sitting in bed, I can plug my MacBook into my TV and then I can just use Netflix and stuff um, using my phone as a remote. And then as I mentioned before, here's Helium which lets you back up your applications um, whether you're rooted or not. Then I've just got your normal apps for eBay, Amazon Shopping, Etsy, PayPal and then for my bank. If you don't use your bank app on your phone and your bank has an app, um, I really do suggest using it. They tend to be pretty good for like transactions and checking your balance and stuff like that. Then I've got my social folder, which is Fenix, my favourite Twitter app, WhatsApp, Google Inbox, which if you haven't tried, I believe is now on the Play Store um, and is definitely worth a tryout if you email at all. Then we've got Google Hangouts, which I use as my SMS app, Snapchat, phone, Messenger, Google+, Contacts, Facebook, Instagram, so all pretty standard. Um, and then I am trying out these two new Facebook apps for Messenger, which is Strobe and Selfie, so that's the one that lets you send um, sort of circular selfie emoticons to friends and then strobe is the one that lets you send gifts so i'm going to try both those out uh, and get back to you guys then in my stuff folder i have google drive google docs my downloads google photos cabinet which is my favorite file manager the interface is just really really nice um, it's completely material design like up to date with google inbox and google keep stuff like that just looks really good works really really easily and then of course google keep which i use a lot then in my travel folder I've got the train line which if you're in the UK is a really good way of buying tickets in advance and Google Maps which is just Google Maps. Then in my video folder which is sort of weirdly red I've got Play Movies which I never use, Netflix which is awesome, YouTube and the new YouTube Studio app which if you have a YouTube channel um, is definitely worth checking out as a way of managing comments and stuff like that. Then at the bottom here we've just got Chrome Beta, Clock, Google Earth and Google Fit which is actually pretty good. I haven't used this before um, as it wasn't on um, Lollipop 5.0 but in 5.1 it records all your daily exercise, your walking and stuff like that and then just um, presents it to you in a way so you can see how you've been doing and you can set yourself a daily aim and you get a notification if you hit it. It does seem to be pretty accurate, the old Nexus pedometer app was decent but wasn't that accurate. This one definitely needs to be more accurate. Um, I can look back on it and I know exactly where I was walking and when. Um, so it is sort of like making sense, it's not just making stuff up, which the old one seemed to do a little bit. Then we've got Google Settings, we've got the app for My Light. This is the app I showed you guys before that lets you control light bulbs with your phone. It's really cool if you just drop them into any lamp or any light in your house, you instantly can control them over 3G or Wi-Fi. And I'll put links to both of those in the description um, on Amazon. Then I've just got the Play Store and Settings. I hope you like that guys, please hit the like button if you did. Please also subscribe down below if you haven't already, that really does help. Also remember to share this video and comment if there's anything else you would like to see. You can follow me on all my social media things with the links in the description and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!